You're not going to know the answer to every single question, right? So don't worry about looking dumb. Worry about looking like you don't care about someone. Your confidence should be backed by the fact that your intentions are there to genuinely help people. And so at that point, you shouldn't care what anybody thinks. You shouldn't care what happens. There should be no situation that you're put in that makes you feel awkward because you know that you're there to help someone. Now, if you're there not to help people, just to help yourself, which is what most coaches and trainers are, are teaching agents, then yeah, that's a scary place to be if you're there just for you. And what's very interesting about email marketing is everybody's so concerned with unsubscribes and open rates. I don't even look at that. Definitely don't care about the unsubscribes. What are you gonna do there? Open rate. I don't have time to look at it, okay? And what's far more interesting to me is the fact that this is why I do email marketing. 90% of the people on your list organically are gonna see it in their inbox. That's a 90% organic reach versus one, two, three, four, five percent uh, organic reach on social media. So do you wanna build a foundation of your business on 5% of organic reach that 5% of the followers you have on that page actually see your content? Or do you wanna build your, the foundation of your personal brand on a 90% organic reach model? All right, that's why I choose email. And what I think is really cool is the fact that when people look look at open rates and everything, what they're not figuring in is the extra impressions above that 25% open rate of people who see it in their inbox, appreciate it, just aren't ready to do anything. In two years, they become interested, they open it three weeks in a row and then call you to do a deal. There's a lot of your clients here that aren't even gonna be open in it. And we're concerned about the content. Yeah, we wanna have good content, wanna have a you know, good looking email and everything, but guys, this is only half the story. The open rate and the people that are open the emails are, are literally not even half the story, right? So understand the ramifications here. Understand the, the long-term perspective here, right? I'm trying to set you guys up for an automatic business, but you gotta put the work in on the front end. It's like building your revenue share team, right? It's not easy. Put the work in up front, it gets easier on the back end. You've got to be on the phone. And whether you, want to, whether you want to trick yourself into saying this is a warm call, see all, all you have to do, all you have to do is uh, for the cold calls, right? Because a lot of people that you warm call end up not knowing who you are or why you're calling. And so then you're right back to cold calling. And so all you have to do is pretend like if you need to tell yourself these are warm calls when you're making cold calls, it's the same thing. This, this is all in your head, guys. It's on your head. What I want to do is supercharge your business. It's to supercharge your business, supercharge, which means that all these things are great that you guys are saying, but it's slow growth. It's like you're picking up here and there. You're getting a social media guy here, you're getting a social media person there. You're picking up a few business cards at some events, you know, 2030. Um, door knocking, right? You have to walk to each door, it takes a lot of time. Uh, mailing, you're just going to mail and wait on people to call you. Um, it's just kind of like chipping away at it and, and you're just prolonging the inevitable, which is you got to get on the phone with those people. So my thing is, is why would I spend all that time, money and effort on those activities when I can bypass all that and just pretend like these property owners information I have are warm Zillow leads. I can just pretend like, right? I can just pretend like these 2000 property owners I picked up for $50. 2,000 of them for $50 that are the exact property owners I want to do business with, I can just pretend in my mind that they're warm Zillow leads and just call and see if there's anything I can do to help them. See, I'm trying to open you guys' mind up to the fact that all the stuff you guys just said is just a middleman, let's call it a middleman, to the conversation. All those things, the objective of all those activities is just to get us to a real live voice-to-voice -voice conversation. But they're warm leads, Ricky. Yeah, some of them. Not all of them. What do you do with the ones that are not? If you call a warm lead, you think they're a warm lead, and they end up not knowing who they are, do you hang up real quick? Because you just, <laughs> they're just, whoa, you're not warm, I gotta go. <laughs> no, no, you fight through that conversation. And developing the skill to talk to people you don't know and make them feel comfortable with you is the skill that's gonna make you the top 1% of 1%ers, if that's what you guys care to be.
I'm not telling you that that's what, no, not everybody has the ambition to be the top 1% of 1%. Percenters. You may sell 30 properties, 40 properties a year doing social media and you're fine with that. That's great. I want whatever you guys want. I'm just trying to open your mind up to, to my world. You know, I want hyper fast growth now. I gotta get there now so that I can build that brand, automate that business and go build other businesses. Market's always changing and morphing and doing different things. We're entering into very uncharted waters because normally at this, at this point in the market, builders are, and we do, we do see an, a huge uptick in new home starts, right? Permits to build new homes are up. It needs to be up. It needs to continue to be up to supply the demand. And what's gonna happen there because we have new home starts up is it's gonna create inventory later because we've got people who are gonna upgrade to these new homes and then they're gonna sell their home. So like, you know, six, eight months down the road towards the end of this year, you know, theoretically, we should see a nice little bump in inventory, right? Um, but that's that's just a slight little bump. It's not gonna like take care of the, the, the overwhelming demand that we have, you know what I mean? But uh -huh. I mean, we're just in an interesting place because as the market cycles happen, when we're at the top of a cycle, when a bubble starts to happen, you know, one one key sign that we've always been able to look at is the fact of, how much money builders are making on their houses that they're being built, right? But what's so interesting about this moment right now is lumber went up 200% since last year, right? Lumber went up 200% since last year. You know, inflation on lumber is through the roof. Um, so we're in very uncharted waters right now. Plus we have a monetary policy and interest rates look, you know, they're talking about not doing anything for a couple of years. They could change their mind tomorrow, but I mean, you know, this is like, this is wild, man. This is like watching a soap opera to me, man. I just, I really enjoy watching this whole thing go down, you know, because I'm laughing all the way to the bank. People are closing deals every single day, regardless of the market. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I built my brand, right? So I reap the benefits of people coming to me saying, hey, I wanna sell, I wanna take some money off the table, I wanna cash out on this, on this great market, or buyers who are super, super motivated, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you start telling your opinions on stuff, not just sending information, but like telling what you think about the information, that's when people really start tuning into you, right? When you say, look, you know, you guys really need to try this place. You know, me and my husband went there last week. I had the whatever and it was amazing, right? Reply back for a chance to win a $20 gift card. You know, reply back for a chance to win a $20 gift card. People reply back, it gives engagement, you go back and forth with them. One of them wins, the rest of them you say, listen, I'm sorry you didn't make it, but let me take you to lunch there sometime. Boom, now you're meeting them in person. Um, one week can be stats, you know, one week of the month can be stats of the month, you know, where you actually go through the, the numbers and you give the, those analytical people their fix. They want to know what the numbers are, the price per square foot, the increase in this and inventory and prices and all that stuff. Um, and so you just make it interesting, right? And it, the thing is, is, it's a bulk email, but you create it every week, okay? And the fact that you create it every week um, and it's original content versus drip campaigns, you guys need to completely shut any drip campaign off because number one, there's three or four other agents in your market doing the same exact, using the same company. And so that your clients are getting three emails with the same subject with three different agents about how to cook shrimp etouffee. <laughs> and like, the, the, you know, what color to paint your walls in the fall and 10 buyer tips to win something in the spring and national real estate stats. No one in your market cares about national real estate stats. They wanna know local stuff. Right? And so again, it comes back to sweat equity. You have to put the time in and, 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 and you build these things and put some thought into it. You know, nothing about this is automated. I still build my weekly email every Wednesday. I'll do it right after this Zoom. Um, I still think about it and figure out what I'm gonna say and, and build it out. You can go to zero to diamond.com. Okay, you can go to zero to diamond.com and there's, it's totally free. There's a course 
and there's a, there's a lesson in the course called Ricky's Weekly Email. And there's a link that goes to every email I've sent out to my clients for the last three or four years. And you can literally look at every single email that I've, the actual emails I've sent out, and you can steal the format, steal the ideas, you know, make it your own, use it, you know, go there and get ideas. But that, that weekly email webinar I did that's on the link I just shared with you guys is also an incredible piece of content that you should really watch if, if you, if you're wanting to do this, because I go pretty deep with a lot of the philosophies behind it and what it's done to help me. And I screen share my computer and kind of show you guys some things. It's a really good training session. Does that help? Yeah, definitely. See, see, see. They, they need, they need to feel, they need to feel a little bit of you in the email, even though they know it's a bulk email. They need to feel a little bit of you in there. They got to get a little bit of you in there, you know. And that's when the opinions and you actually writing the copy for the email and doing it that way. Um, but you know what? Some of these agents they copy and paste these articles and it's small font and you know it it's. <sighs> You got to make these things short, sweet, to the point. Click here for your different information that you want, you know, and then they can click there. It's easy. It's easy to look at. It's easy to navigate. It's easy to click on the information you want and go find it, you know, and it's a great resource and tool for, for people. Nobody wants to talk about 100,000 cold calls, a weekly email every single Wednesday since 2007, working on an oil rig, roofing houses, going through all the stuff I went through. Nobody wants to talk about that. They just want to look right now. I'm closing 100 deals. Man, this should be nice. Come, come hang out an hour, 15 minutes in my shoes. My phone blows up. There's smoke coming out of it all day long, every day. I can barely keep up with just answering the phone, much less the calls coming in while I'm on the phone, right? It would drive people insane. But you gotta find, you gotta center yourself to a place where nothing bothers you and you don't worry about anything. That's the secret to success. You gotta, you can't worry. The more you worry, the less productive you're gonna be because the worry clogs your mind up from other more productive activities and you're worried about things that aren't even gonna happen. You're worried what if this is gonna happen or if that's gonna happen and 95% of the things you worry about never happen. Your seller doesn't get mad that there's a few repairs to, 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 to do on the inspection addendum. He does, he's fine with it. And here you were worried about it for, for eight days straight. It was clogging you up from making more calls and thinking about other deals and helping more people. You're worrying about stuff that never happens is holding you back from helping more people. That should be an eye-opening statement to you. The weekly email. If you guys go to zero to diamond.com, if you go to zero to diamond.com, there's a free course and there's a lesson that's called Ricky's weekly email. And there's a link that goes to every email that I've done for the past three or four years. You can look at the exact emails. There's also a tutorial. There's a tutorial of, of me building the email and talking about the email, but it's gotta be original. If you do a drip campaign, shut it down today. Nobody cares about how to cook shrimp etouffee. Nobody cares what color to paint your walls in the fall. Nobody cares about 10 buyer tips. Nobody cares about national stats. They want to know local stats and they want to know what you think about it. They want to know what your opinion is and they want it in a format that's easy to read. They don't want a paragraph, real small font. They're gonna delete you, they're gonna unsubscribe from you so quick it'll make your head spin. You're not gonna know the answer to every single question. Right? So don't worry about looking dumb. Worry about looking like you don't care about someone. Right? And and if you have the your confidence should be backed by the fact that your intentions are there to genuinely help people. And so at that point, you shouldn't care what anybody thinks. You shouldn't care what happens. There should be no situation that you're put in that makes you feel awkward because you know that you're there to help someone. Now, if you're there not to help people, just to help yourself, which is what most coaches and trainers are, are teaching agents, then yeah, that's a scary place to be. If you're there just for you, or if, you, if you're following this strategy of, I'm just trying to sell a property to make a commission off of you, not necessarily caring what why you're doing it or, you know, what the situation is. So that's one thing, but yeah, it's just a cop out. I hear it all the time. I'm better in person, Ricky. 
uh, what's the difference? What's the difference in talking to someone in person and talking to someone on the phone, right? The number one objective for any salesperson is to make your prospect feel comfortable with you. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're on the phone, in person, or, or online, even chatting. The object is to make the prospect feel comfortable with you. The only way to make the prospect feel comfortable with you is to be comfortable with them. Right? If you're comfortable in that scenario, they're going to be they're going to feel comfortable. They're going to feel that. They're going to feed off that. But if you're nervous, if you're scared, if you're trembling, if you're shaking, if you're, you know, uh, if there's something off, if you're not on top of your game, if uh, you know, if you're all those factors, then that's going to be a red flag to them. They're not going to feel comfortable cuz you're not comfortable. But if you can just relax, and just be comfortable. You guys need to think of these calls as like prank calls. <laughs> you need to, if you guys ever did prank calls and you're a kid, like, like what made you not scared to call someone and say something off the wall funny and prank them? Like what made you do that, but you won't do this, right? It's the same thing. Call people, see how they're doing, check on them. We're not trying to sell them anything. We just want to let them know, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house right down the road from you just sold. Is there anything I can do to help you today? I'm here to help you. Not help me. I'm here to help you. And that should take a lot of the pressure off, you know. But when people start to get wild with you, start to get rude and this and that, number one, they don't know you. And there's no way they can judge your character based on 2.7 seconds on the phone, okay? They don't know that you're there to help them. They're just, they're just assuming that you're just like everyone else calling, trying to get something out of them, but you're not. And so if they make that misconception and they've assumed that wrongly, you know, that's nothing that you can help. But at the same time, if they start to kind of push back on me, I'm gonna push right back because you know, that's offensive to me because I am there to help them, you know?